Welcome to our video on transcranial Doppler basics for every vascular surgeon to know. Transcranial Doppler or TCD is a frequently misunderstood and underutilized tool. It is the only modality in our diagnostic toolbox that monitors blood flow and captures embolization patterns in the cerebral arteries and all that real time. It provides an opportunity to respond to abnormalities immediately. Because of these characteristics, some refer to TCD as a stethoscope or blood pressure cuff designed specifically for the brain. The clinical applications of TCD are diverse. From the detection of cerebral vasospasm after subarachnoid hemorrhage to diagnosing a right to left cardiac or intrapulmonary shunt it has broad utility. The focus of this video will be on vascular surgery applications of TCD and intraoperative neuromonitoring for cerebrovascular procedures. The most common surgical procedures where TCD assists the interventionists are carotid endorectomy, TCAR, TAVR, TVAR, and other aortic surgeries, and it also has significant utility in assisting during sclerotherapy procedures to treat peripheral AV malformations by allowing detection of right to left shunt prior to delivering potentially dangerous thrombogenic material. Ordering a preoperative TCD exam for patients is a must. This step helps establish the presence of optimal transtemporal bone windows. This way, we avoid delays in the OR because we already know if the patient is not suitable for TCD monitoring. We also establish baseline measurements of flow velocities and directions in the various vessel segments. There are separate billing codes for a pre-op exam and for monitoring during surgery. To start monitoring a patient in the operating room, the ultrasound technologist first places the TCD head frame around the patient's head. This ensures that the ultrasound probes used to insonate the cerebral arteries remain in place throughout the intervention. Because of the positioning of the head during carotid procedures, in most cases we only monitor on the operative side. Aortic procedures do not require a head turn in most cases, therefore we often monitor the MCA on one side and the PCA on the other side. The TCD monitor will continuously display the M mode and the spectral Doppler signal. On the M mode, blood flowing towards the probe will appear as a red signal, while a blue M mode signal detects blood in the corresponding depth that is flowing away from the probe. On this screen, you can appreciate that blood in the middle cerebral artery on the insulated right side is flowing towards the probe, while blood in the anterior communicating artery is flowing away from the probe. This is the physiological state of the circle of Willis. The MCA signal is usually found at a depth of around 50 millimeters. At this depth, the other cerebral vessels are unlikely to interfere with our signal, as the anatomic position of those vessels are at a greater depth. We expect to see a continuous, uninterrupted red signal on M mode when we find the MCA. The spectral waveform is found underneath the M mode on the TCD screen. MCA's spectral waveform normally displays low resistance vessel characteristics. This means that there is a continuous, uninterrupted blood flow during diastole. In a healthy individual, the upstroke part of the waveform shows a rapid acceleration during systole, followed by stepwise deceleration, and as mentioned, a positive end diastolic flow. You may want to pause this video and study which major cerebral vessels are showing blood flow at the various depths on M mode. Patients who need a carotid intervention often display dampening or blunting of MCA waveforms. In both cases, the rapid systolic upstroke disappears because of a proximal stenosis. When the systolic upstroke is delayed, we talk about a dampened waveform while a blunted waveform completely lacks a defined upstroke, signifying a more severe proximal stenosis. Notice the reversed ACA in M mode as an important collateral in our blunted waveform example. 
flow velocities are displayed as peak systolic velocity or PSV and diastolic velocity or EDV and mean flow velocity or MFV. MFV is calculated from PSV and EDV. Delta is the current mean flow velocity compared to the baseline and is expressed as a percentage. Note that the baseline can be reset any time during monitoring. Pulsatility index or PI reflects the difference between flow velocities during systole and diastole. Normal PI values in the MCA are between 0.6 and 1.1. Normal mean flow velocity values are 50 plus or minus 12 centimeters per second. Trend plots on the TCD screen track the monitored values over time and provide a graphical illustration of these measurements on the bottom of the screen. We recommend tracking the mean flow velocity and the PI values during procedures. During carotid endarterectomy, the clamping of the ICA will be the step that results in the most significant flow decrease in the MCA. The rate of decrease will depend on the presence of established collaterals. If the delta percentage drops below 70%, the anesthesiologist should aim to increase the mean arterial pressure or MAP with the goal of restoring delta to greater than 70%. In most patients, this is achieved with a MAP that is between 90 and 105 millimeters of mercury. If delta decreases below 50% after clamping, the first step is also to increase MAP and see if perfusion can be enhanced. If there is not a sufficient response to MAP increase, shunt placement is indicated. During TCAR, the initiation of flow reversal and the cross clamping of the common carotid artery are critical points where special attention must be given to the change in mean flow velocity. As during endarterectomy, the rate of decrease will depend on the presence of established collaterals. The TCAR timeout ensures that the systolic blood pressure remains between 140 and 160 millimeters of mercury after flow reversal initiation. Notwithstanding this blood pressure range, a greater than 50% decrease in delta may still occur. This warrants further MAP increase within a reasonable range. We can also consider changing the rate of flow reversal from high to low. If delta remains low, discontinuation of flow reversal can be considered using the operator's judgment. In addition to flow velocity and waveform changes, TCD also informs the interventionist about the presence of emboli. These particulates traveling through the MCA can be the result of spontaneous embolization from an unstable plaque. More frequently though, they are byproducts of the various surgical steps. The emboli present as white, usually forward slash shaped signals simultaneously in M mode and the spectrum display. They are also called high intensity interval signals or HITs. During an endarterectomy, we usually see the highest number of emboli at the placement of a shunt and immediately following the release of the clamp placed on the common carotid artery. During TCAR, we may see emboli during stent deployment despite an active flow reversal. Contrast material administered from an incompletely de-aired syringe causes hits due to air bubbles traveling through the MCA. During TVAR, emboli may be released during intra-aortic wires traversing through the aortic arch and from the deployment of endograft devices. We believe that during device deployment, most emboli come from air trapped in the endograft that cannot be eliminated by the usual de-airing methods. TCD does not have the ability to differentiate between solid and air particulates. The limitations of TCD include its limited availability at certain medical centers 
as it requires specialized vascular ultrasound training. In about 10 to 15% of patients, temporal bone windows are not available to insulate the middle cerebral arteries.